I'm Wouter, I'm the product manager for all the P3 products. Uh, if you prefer to follow this session in French, we have this session also in French in two hours from now. And as Ben mentioned, we also have a more uh, technical deep dive uh, P3 sessions in our catalog as well. So this is just a basic introduction. Uh, we have some more detailed sessions on how to set it up uh, connecting the console or how to do uh, more advanced stuff uh, in a separate session. So uh, high level introduction. Uh, what's the goal of today's uh, session? So we want to uh, explain you why we did develop P3 in the first place. Uh, what does it do? Where is it being used? How does it make life easier? And how does it enable more creativity? Uh, at the same time, I'll also be doing uh, a few basic demonstration of some of the workflows in P3. And uh, for those who have a little bit of uh, have seen or used P3 before, uh, I will also be demoing a few of the new features coming in version 5.2 of the software, which will come out uh, right before summer, uh, because luckily our teams are still able to develop in these difficult times. So first of all, why did we develop? So the P3 system was originally developed in uh, 2008. Originally it was made for our video panel. So for the old LC panels, you might remember the two by one meter massive video panels, EC panels. Uh, we developed P3 as an easy way to get video mapped and addressed and distributed to those products. Uh, instead of horrible DVI cables because our original video panels were with DVI cables. Now with more creative LED fixtures like strips, grids and pixel strings, and moving it's getting uh, more pixelated. Uh, it became very clear to us that protocols such as DMX and ArtNet were not suitable for uh, such large pixel count products. So what we did is we took the P3, which we developed for the video panels in the first place, and we modified it to also support more creative fixtures such as Skeptrons and now also more recently uh, moving heads. So now the P3 can send video to not only video panels, but also more creative lighting uh, and creative video fixtures. Uh, thereby the P3 now becomes a central part where it gets video, it gets the mix from the console and merges it all to all those fixtures. Uh, but I will uh, explain that a bit deeper. Very important, the basic uh, P3 philosophy is we don't want to force anyone to use P3. So all of the fixtures we do and which support P3 are also compatible with industry standard protocols such as DMX, ArtNet, and Streaming ACN. So all of our products can also be used without a P3. What we want to do with P3 is we want to make it easier to set up, configure, and control those fixtures. Certainly in applications where you're doing video mapping and lighting console uh, controls at the same time. Also, we want to make it cheaper to run pixelated fixtures uh, because when you run them on DMX or ArtNet, you typically have a lot of costs on, in generating all those universes on a typical MA system. You're stuck with a lot of NPUs if you need to generate all those pixels. Whereas if you put P3 in the mix, you can just send video from a media server and you don't have the additional cost of generating all those universes. So a basic look on how a P3 system looks. So you will find the P3 controller uh, in the middle. Uh, so the P3 controller gets video from a media server, a video switcher, a camera system. So it gets a video feed and the P3 controller also gets the MX, ArtNet or streaming ACN from the lighting console. So he kind of sits in the middle between those two uh, systems. They're, they're not both mandatory. It's perfectly possible to run some of the fixtures only with the video input or only with the console input. You just have the option to do both at the same time and then mix between the two systems. So from the P3 to the fixtures, it's all based on standard networking. So standard CAT5e cables, so also standard network switches are supported. And then on the output on the network, you have all types of uh, P3 controllable fixtures, moving it, such as the new um, Macalure PXL fixture, which is a P3 controllable, uh, the Macalure, the Videotonic Dot, and then the more uh, video type fixtures such as Skeptrons, Dotrons, Spectrons. So a lot of those fixtures, they all sit on the network. Uh, important to realize as well is that uh, the moving edge, when you run them on P3, you do not need to wire them with the mix cable in parallel. It's the P3 controller that merges all the video 
with the DMX channels and sends it all to all the fixtures over one single network. So no more uh, five pin XLRs in this case. So the P3 does all the mapping of those fixtures. I'll get to that. It does all the addressing, mode selection, monitoring. And then you can run the show from the console or the media server. So the P3 in this, this sense is a, is a merging and a setup tool, but I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit deeper. So one of the first steps on the P3 is mapping fixtures out. So on the P3, I'll show that right away as well. You can uh, mix and match fixtures any way you want. So this is a small rig with some video fetch on LED buttons, making those triangles here, and also some four mount fixtures, some Mac Allure fixtures in between, some of the new Mac RAP cells as well. So you just map it as it's laid out on the stage. Uh, you can angle fixtures, you can group them, you can scale fixtures, make them smaller, bigger. So all of that uh, mapping is done on the P3. So then once you've made uh, your mapping, then uh, you get a video input from the media server. So video is then mapped onto those fixtures. The P3 itself takes care of all the rotation, scaling. Even if you mix products with different resolutions and pixel pitches, the P3 makes sure that every fixture gets the right part, the right segment of the video image uh, on, the, on its LEDs. So uh, let's go back to that. So once you've mapped video to the fixtures, uh, that's phase one done. So then they can get video from the media server. And then the second step is, uh, is patch and address them. So on the P3, you also get uh, Artnet or a streaming ACN from the console. So then you patch and address all your fixtures in the desired mode to the desired universe. Uh, very important to realize is here is that once you've patched and addressed the fixtures on the P3, you do not need to do any more addressing on the actual fixtures itself. So if you have a moving ad or a Skeptron or any fixtures on a P3 system, you do not need to go to the display and menu of the fixture and, and put the address in or put the mode in or put any special settings in. All of that is managed uh, centrally from the P3 controller. So the P3 controller pushes all of that down to the fixtures uh, from one central place. So that's the basic steps is map the fixtures, get video onto them, patch and address them, that's the three basic steps on, on what you do on a P3 controller. So uh, shortly summarizing uh, what fixtures we have that talk P3, it basically breaks down into three groups of products. We have the uh, rental creative LED fixtures. Uh, the most known there is probably the, the, the Martin Video Skeptron product, but we also have the Video Fatron, Dotron, and the newer uh, Video Atomic Dot uh, fixture. Then on the Opposite end of the spectrum, we have our architectural creative LED fixtures because the P3 is equally used in rental uh, applications and in fixed installation applications. So on the fixed installation side, we have the more architectural fixtures such as the exterior PIX line, exterior dot HP, the, the dot grid and strip family. So that's all these products. Uh, we actually have uh, some deep dive sessions on these products as well. Uh, sign up for those if you want to know more about these products uh, specifically. And then in the middle, we have the moving ads, where the Mac Allure was the first moving ad to talk P3 because of its pixelated uh, LED engine. And now the Mac RPXL uh, released last week also has a full P3 control over the beams and the R backlight. And uh, well knowing is that all future uh, Mac fixtures will be supporting P3. So they will all have network in and network uh, through uh, connections and they will all support the P3 protocol. So then on the controller side, uh, we have uh, four variants of the P3. The first one is P3 PC. So that's the software only version of it, runs on any Windows computer. Uh, a Mac version is actually on the way. Uh, this version is completely free of charge. Uh, you can just download it from the martin.com website. Uh, no license dongle or anything needed. Uh, it can output 20,000 pixels of video to fixtures. And for video input, it uses a screen capture. And for console input, it uses Artnet. Then we get to the hardware-based P3 controllers with the P350, 150, and 300. Each of those has have an has an incrementing number of pixels on the output side. 
Uh, but even the smaller one, the P3050 uh, with 100,000 pixels, that can already, uh, already drive uh, 1,000 uh, uh, video capture. So even the smaller one is, is quite capable uh, for Creative LED applications. All of the units have DVI input from the, uh, from, uh, the media server and ArtNet input from the desk with streaming ACN coming very soon. The P3 300 has some more advanced features like SDI input for camera feeds, Genlock input for synchronizing in TV studios. So that's more the more specialized machine. Uh, before we deep dive in some of the uh, workflows, uh, some examples of, B, of P3 being used out there in the market so you get a bit of an understanding uh, where and how P3 is used today. So this was uh, Carpe Diem. Uh, a show in Norway with uh, around 800 video captions making up uh, the stage floor, the back wall and the ceiling all mapped and controlled from a P3 uh, system. Actually, the IMAX screens on the side were marked in video phase five panels also controlled by P3. Some more architectural uh, applications, the Danish industry building in Copenhagen, where we have uh, 1,800 meter of LED strips, exterior pix line, also fully mapped from P3. Uh, so video mapped on P3, not a single DMX uh, cable or control to be seen. More recently, the Grammy Awards uh, featured these moving walls with video captions uh, and video fetchons in there, also a P3-based system. Back to architectural Auckland Bridge in New Zealand, a massive installation fully lined with uh, Martin Creative LED fixtures, both alongside the, the main structure of the bridge here at the bottom as well, uh, fully mapped on P3 as well. And then uh, some more nightlife stuff. This is probably one of the more crazy installations and deployments of P3. This is the Omnia nightclub uh, in Las Vegas, obviously, uh, where all the LED strips in the bottom of all these rings and the dots on the outside of all these rings, they're all mapped uh, on P3 as well. We're talking about uh, 3,000, 4,000 fixtures in total uh, in this structure, all mapped and managed by P3. Uh, more, uh, more artistic, uh, an installation with exterior pix line in, uh, in the United Kingdom, also video strips embedded into a wall and controlled with P3. So you see P3 really uh, goes into very different uh, rental and, and architectural applications. So some of the key features and, and, and a little introduction uh, to the, the workflow walkthrough. So as I mentioned, the first step is create your layout of fixtures, mix and match any way you want. Then secondly, a map video onto fixtures from any source. The P3 does all the scaling and the mapping. So once you've mapped video to it, then you patch the fixtures to DMX or ArtNet, including selecting the mode, start address without touching or any of the fixtures all, all remotely. And then once you're up and running, you control the fixtures from the console from the media server, so from a video input, or from a mix of both. Uh, I'll get to that, but the P3 system actually has some switch and mix functionalities allowing you to, to flip back and forth between controlling fixtures from console or from a uh, video source. Also very important uh, in the P3 system is that the full P3 system is, is synchronized. Uh, so the video playback uh, is, is fully synchronized across all fixtures, which is often a problem when you uh, use ArtNet for pixel mapping, for example, when you do like fast content, it doesn't update on all fixtures at the same time. The P3 system is a fully synchronized system, so you get a, a perfectly smooth and synchronized playback. So the first thing you do on the P3 is the mapping. Uh, so we, we are making the, the mapping on the P3 as, as intuitive and as easy as possible. Uh, there's some new tools which I will show you right away, some new align and spread tools. Uh, on how you map fixtures on the P3. Uh, uh, but I'll do a demo on that right away. Also to further help the mapping, when you map fixtures, we, you can actually map, import a stage picture or a drawing and map directly on the drawing, or you can even map directly onto the video. And then we also have free scale mode, which is a new feature coming, uh, but we'll get to that uh, in, 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 in the more advanced session. So let's do some uh, quick demo uh, 
on how you map on the P3. Uh, ben, can you just confirm that you can now see the P3 uh, screen? Yes, I can. That's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is the, the setup uh, screen of the P3, so which is the, 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 first, uh, the first view on the P3 controller. So this is where you start mapping uh, fixtures uh, onto uh, the canvas. So you can have a blank canvas onto which you start mapping fixtures, but you can also import a CAD drawing as I, I've done here. So then you import the drawing and start mapping the fixtures onto the CAD drawing, or you can just have your video input uh, as your background onto which you start mapping your fixtures. To make it a little bit e easier for, uh, to see, I'll just use blank uh, background as the starting point. So here, uh, you start mapping, you have, first of all, you can take fixtures either from the library. So this allows you to start mapping without any actual fixtures connected. That's one way of mapping. The other way is uh, discover devices, which means if you connect fixtures to the rig, you can actually, they will show up here in the discover devices and then you can just drag them from the discover devices onto the workspace. So there's two ways of mapping, either from a library when you're preparing up front or uh, just from the discover devices if you haven't pre pre prepared anything and you just get on a job and quickly need to get them mapped. So uh, I'll just grab some fixtures uh, to show you. So let's start with uh, some uh, video captions. Uh, zoom in a little bit. So I might just place a few captions on the workspace. And of course, some of the newer things we now have is, uh, for example, the align tool allowing you to align them vertically so they're all at the same uh, height. Another tool we now have is the uh, spread tool allowing you to spread them. So I can just say, hey, I want them a little bit further. So let's say I want them at 400, at four, uh, 400 millimeter uh, centers. Tap that in and then they're all mapped. So very easy. Uh, to map, of course, you can also group fixtures. So let's say they, these need to be in a group, then you can start rotating that group. Uh, quickly show this. So you can really easily start mapping uh, your fixtures as they are laid out on your building or your structure. Of course, you can mix and match. So I, let's say uh, I want some of the new uh, Mac Aura uh, products there, so I can just put some of those moving heads here at the bottom. Let's say, let's uh, put two lines of uh, four fixtures. And also here, our uh, spreading tool is very useful to spread them. Let's say we wanna spread them 800 millimeter horizontally and 600 vertically. If that's your rig, you map them out uh, and off you go. Of course, what I'm not what, what I'm now doing is a complete mess because I don't have any any show to build. But I think you get the point. You just build the show as you go. Map uh, all your fixtures on the workspace as they are laid out uh, on the uh, stage. So that's, uh, so that's the basic workflow. So you map the fixtures out and once you've mapped them out, then you go to uh, video input. And in video input, you will select your source. In this uh, case, I'm demoing this on a P3 PC installation. So I don't have any of the uh, hardware video inputs. I'm just doing a screen capture right now from an external player, uh, from a secondary player. Normally, if you would do this on a P350 or 150, you would select DVI as a source, and then you would take the DVI signal from a media server, video mixer, uh, VGA program uh, even. So you select your source. Here you can even scale uh, your video, uh, scale your video, crop it, offset it. So you have all the, the typical video control parameters, and then you basically see how the video that's being sent into the P3 controller is being mapped onto the fixture. So here you see uh, the result of your mapping. Okay, so that's the basic workflow of, uh, as I said, mapping your fixtures, including rotation, creating groups. Uh, there's a lot more uh, advanced stuff to it, but this is just the basics. And then once you've mapped your fixtures, 
the next step is getting video onto it. So then that part of the, the workflow is done. So now these fixtures are getting video. So once you have done these two steps for some fixtures, that's enough for a fixture like the video scaptron, which is these, these thin lines, which is just an LED strip fixture. If, if you're not familiar with the fixture, uh, once they get video, they start playing video, they're good to go. Uh, some of the other fixtures like those uh, big pancakes here, which is the, uh, the new Mac RP XL, these also need to be patched uh, to DMX or Artnet because they of course have functions like pan and tilt and zoom, which are not video controlled. So those uh, also need to be patched to DMX uh, or Artnet, uh, but we'll get through that. So let's, oh, that's in the way. Uh, how do I move this away? Oh, yeah. So let's go back. So, so once you've done that mapping, uh, a little bit in an introduction of how you use the P3 to set up and manage your rig, which is basically everything that uh, deals with uh, the uh, mapping and the, uh, the mapping and the addressing of the fixtures. So as I mentioned before, on the P3, you set the fixtures to the correct universe and start address without walking around uh, at all. You can also change the fixture mode on many fixtures at once in a matter of seconds. This is a great uh, advantage for festivals. For example, if you're on a festival situation, you have some Mac RP XLs and some Scaptrons and uh, the LD for the next band comes in and it says, oh, but I, I have, uh, my show is programmed with the fixtures in basic mode. Well, from the P3, in a few clicks, you can reset all your fixtures from extended mode to basic mode without any climbing into the rig or anything. Uh, the P3 can manage it all in a central uh, place. Also on the P3, as it's a fully bi-directional system, you see the status of all the fixtures in real time. So if any fixture has a problem, you will see that on the P3 controller. Uh, so you don't need to ask the LDA, hey, can you try something with that fixture? You have full control from the P3. You don't need to be staring at the rig to see if there's something wrong. The P3 has the full uh, two-way communication. P3 is also used to run, uh, to upload new firmware into all of the fixtures on the network. So from the P3, you can update firmware on the fixtures. You don't need to walk around with a USB stick or any special uploader hardware. Also that is fully managed from the P3 controller. Also very, very important when you're sitting behind the P3, you have a full system view of the incoming video. As you just saw, you saw, you see there's a video coming in from the media server and also a full preview of what's coming in from the lighting desk. So all the art net that's coming into the B3, you have a, have a see on that. So as a system tech, managing the fixtures, you, you, see, you see what's happening in the fixtures, but you also see what you're getting from the media server and from the console. So as a system tech, you, you have a really a full overview of, of, of what's happening uh, on the system. And the cool thing is behind the P3, you're, you do not need to disturb the, the LD to try anything with the fixtures. If you just want to run a test pattern to, to focus your lights, you can do that from the P3 and the, you don't, do not need to disturb the LD. So um, this graph kind of shows it very visually. So typically the system tech is sitting behind the P3 uh, managing the fixtures and then he is completely independent from the LD uh, who's sitting behind the media server and or uh, the console. Uh, but let's actually uh, demo that, how you do that setup, how you do that patching. Uh, exactly. So to match what I've done on the console, I'll quickly take all the fixtures and make it a little bit simpler. So I take some uh, video patrons, which are LED buttons. I'll put them on the workspace. And let's align them to satisfy my, my OCD and spread them evenly once again to satisfy my OCD. So a very simple example of, of uh, four vertical hanging video fetchons. So you can already see here uh, video is being mapped. Uh, for those that do not know the video Fatron fixture, it's a fixture of with 20 LEDs along the length and four LEDs along the width. So that's why you will see here, if you zoom in, I don't know if it really shows up on the web stream, you see the, you actually see the pixels. So the resolution of the video coming in is actually higher 
but on the Petri preview, you see it downscaled to the actual pixel quantity on the real fixture. So you have a better uh, idea of how it will look on the real fixture. Cool. Uh, so that was the first step. So the second step is, okay, now I need to patch these fixtures to their mix and motion. Um, well, I'm gonna, it's the first time we're running this one. I'm actually gonna do it the other way around. Uh, so start with some uh, Mac RAPXL. So put four fixtures there, same thing. They're mapped to video, so now I want to patch them uh, to DMX. So I go to the, so video is done. I go to the DMX and motion uh, tab. So now I say, oh, those fixtures, I want to patch them uh, to my console as well. So basically all the modes that the Mac RAPXL has will show up on the P3 controller. The Mac RAPXL has four modes and you will immediately see in each of the modes the channel count and the channel layout. You will even find the, the famous ludicrous mode, which the Mac RAPXL has, which has exactly 512 DMX channels. So let's put them in basic mode. So they say, hey, I want to put those RAPXLs in basic mode. I want to put them on consecutive channels and I want to put them on Artnet Universe 12, uh, just for argument's sake. So once you've done that, that patch, you will also see on the actual fixtures that the display and the menu on the fixture updates because they've been set to basic mode, they've been set to a specific ArtNet address and a start address. All of them, all of that is now done on the fixtures. So now you're basically done. So now if I send ArtNet into the P3, I can pan, tilt, I can move those fixtures and the video will also arrive on those fixtures. So I, that's all you need to do basically. Map video to it and patch them uh, to the MX. Good. Let's try that again uh, with another example with, with video veterans because there I can do some uh, preview stuff. So let's start at one. So let's take those four veterans again, align them vertically and spread them horizontally like this. So video veterans, same thing. Also these I want to patch uh, to my console. The video of Vetron, as, as I mentioned a, a while ago, uh, is, 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 a, is a, a type of fixture where you do not need to patch it to the MX because this fixture, because there's no extra parameters such as pan, tilt, and zoom, this fixture will even without the MX control already start uh, playing video uh, right away. So here, the DMX patching is optional, whereas on a moving it, it is not because there's parameters such as pan and tilt involved. So here, uh, if I pet, it's the same, uh, the same workflow. You will only see that the modes are slightly different because this type of fixture has, has a different layout. Uh, for these type of fixtures, there's five modes. It could be a very simple one channel intensity mode. Um, RGB, which is just three channels. Basic is dimmer and uh, then RGB. And then the more interesting uh, modes are also the newer modes, so which you will not find in the current software, but they're coming in version 5.2 just before summer, is hybrid and pixel map mode, because these modes actually allow you from the console to toggle between video control or uh, control from the lighting desk. And I'll actually show right away how that works. So let's patch them in hybrid modes. So in hybrid modes, they have a special DMX channel called P3 switch. This channel allows you to toggle every fixture between playing video from media server or playing pixel map effects from the console. Uh, so this really allows you to, to get uh, both controls, uh, yeah, to switch between two control modes. Once you patch this type of fixture in, in hybrid mode, you actually also have a choice in segments, meaning in how many pieces you want to split the fixture. Uh, the video Fatron has 200 LEDs, so the maximum I can get is 200 so I could literally say hey on my console I want well I want RGB channels for each of those 200 LEDs giving you 600 channels uh, right away uh, which is perfectly possible but for the uh, demo here uh, let's just put them in uh, in 10 segments which means that from a console point of view he will just have 10 
uh, blocks of pixels that you control from the desk. So let's put them in hybrid mode, uh, 10 segments, once again consecutive, and let's put them on universe one, start address one. So here uh, they're patched. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, so you have the patch on the P3, but you also have the live uh, preview what you get from the desk. So if you go to live values, you actually see what's coming in from the desk on all those channels. Uh, so you do not need to fight with the LD from the, if your fixtures are not working or not showing anything, you can just see what you're getting from the desk. And then you can say, well, your intensities are down on the desk. It's normal that the fixtures are uh, blacked out right now. So let's open up, uh, let's open up the desk uh, alongside it to show how that works. So let's go back to patch. So let's first, let's clear it all. Let's first show on desk. Yeah, I'm using MPC because uh, I'm still learning on the MA side. Um, so you will see on the patch on the lighting desk, you will see that I've patched four fixtures also in the hybrid mode with 10 pixels, uh, in, sorry, with 10, uh, yeah, with 10 uh, segments. Same addresses as on the P3 controller. So now the ArtNet goes from the lighting console to the P3 controller as well. And so you can actually see the result of that in the, uh, in the preview on the P3. You will see now, because I patched them to the MX, they switched from playing video to playing whatever the console wants, uh, wants me to play. So right now, if I select those four fixtures on the console, let's open this up. You will see, as I mentioned, that uh, these fixtures have this P3 switch channel, uh, which you will find on the console. You will see that right now the fixtures are set to DMX mode, which actually means that they're playing, they're using the DMX channels to drive what they're, what they're showing. If I go to video, then each of those fixtures will play video. Uh, I, I'm now doing these on all fixtures at the same time. So all fixtures are doing DMX, all fixtures are doing video, but I can also just take a single fixture, let's say fixture number two, I wanna put on DMX mode. And then I can grab the pixels of fixture number two. And then from my lighting desk, I can just core that fixture any way I want. So now I've, I've, I've just singled out that one fixture and I can now control that from my lighting desk. Uh, of course, I can also use some of the uh, effect macros on my desk. So I can do all these kind of uh, pixel mapping patterns from my lighting desk on that one fixture because that fixture is now set uh, to pixel mapping uh, mode. And as I mentioned, uh, just to show it easily, uh, this fixture is now in the mix mode. I can toggle it to video mode right away. You will see in the mix mode, it's blocks, it's bigger blocks of pixels. That's because I've patched it into being 10 segments uh, and not individual uh, pixels on the desk. So this works for all fixtures. So I can say, well, all of the fixtures need to go to their mix mode and all of the fixtures need to run some, uh, some pixel mapping effects from the desk. And then I can just once again, go back, single out a, a, an individual fixture and say, hey, no, number three needs to go back to video. So this really allows you from the desk to, to fully control the fixtures, meaning Hey, I want some fixtures to run video now. I want some fixtures to run DMX, uh, meaning that for you can play video for, us, for one cue of the show and then grab them from the desk and do some solid colors for the next song uh, or uh, just do some pixel map patterns from your lighting desk for another part of the show. So you really have, I always like to call it the best of both worlds because some stuff uh, like a wave or, or something is easier to do uh, with video content on the fixtures, but other stuff like just full solid colors or straw patterns are much easier to do uh, with a console than with video. So really now for every, you now have kind of the possibility to do, uh, to control them in uh, both ways. 
Uh, that's what I wanted. Yes. So, um, so how does that actually uh, affect your 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 setup and and your your controls? Uh, let's take the example of uh, 100 uh, Mac Ara pixels. Uh, if you want to do a full pixel control on both the beam and the Ara on the Mac Ara pixel from the console, uh, you need to put it in ludicrous mode, which is 512 channels. So if you really want to go this way, uh, run them from a desk, then you need a lot of uh, additional NPUs and uh, nodes if you're running the mix. Of course, you can run them in ArcNet as well, then you do not need the, the nodes, but you still need the NPUs for all those parameters. So this becomes a quite expensive setup. So now if we go to the example of uh, using P3, so then you add a P3 controller to the mix and take a video, uh, sorry, video input from media server. Now I can patch these fixtures just in basic mode with only 32 channels because I only need the basic pan and tilt uh, and the basic course and zoom and all of that. And all the pixel effects can then be run from video. So the, in this example with the Mac R pixel, you've saved a lot on NPUs and now you basically have the best of both worlds. If you want to do some video effects on the fixture, you do it with the media server. If you want to run some solid colors, you, you, you do that from the console. So here, the P3 really mixes between the two worlds. We actually have some, some really great videos on our YouTube channel uh, showing some examples of that. Uh, another example here is, uh, is, 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 is video captions. Uh, a video captions is a button with 100 LEDs. So if I put that in the mix uh, extended mode, that's 300 channels of their mix, which literally means for 100 fixtures, I have 100 universes to create. So once again, a lot of NPUs and nodes, a lot of their mix cables to get this system up and running. Also, once again here, if you use a P3 controller uh, to merge ArtNet from the desk and video from the media server, it becomes much easier. You can use the, the power port, you can use the easier cabling, you do not need the additional NPUs and all of that similar as, as with the, the Mac R pixel. As I mentioned, if you still want to do pixel mapping from the desk, perfectly possible with the new software, uh, you can still merge ArtNet pixel mapping in. And then as I was just demoing uh, a few minutes ago, get some pixel map effects from the desk and get some video looks uh, as well. So you, you can toggle back and forth between the two while on the output side, you do not need to do any dynamic cabling or wiring. It remains a P3 network between the fixtures. So none of the more complicated wiring uh, shows up. So that's, that's essentially what the P3 is just, the, sorry, the P3 switch functionality does is that the P3 from version 5.2 onwards will support ArtNet pixel mapping inputs. So for fixtures like Skeptrons and Fetrons, as I was using in the demo, you can toggle between pixel mapping from the desk using ArtNet or P3 video looks. So you really uh, allow you to do pixel mapping from the desk without having to run a large quantity of DMX cables. Uh, as an example here, you do not even need to have that media server. It's perfectly acceptable on a P3 system to only get an ArtNet feed from a lighting desk and do all, all your controls from the lighting desk and never switch to the video look. Uh, so in this case, you're using a, uh, the, the P3 as an ArtNet in to P3 out uh, converter, uh, dealing with all the addressing and the modes and all that, but you're not even using the video part of the uh, P3. Demo, I actually already demoed this uh, functionality. Uh, was a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, then uh, P3 PC, I wanna underline this once more, is, is P3 PC is, is fully uh, free of charge. So, Everything I was demoing today was actually on P3 PC. Uh, it has exactly the same capabilities as a full P3 controller, except that it's just a software you install on a, a computer instead of a 19 inch box. Uh, perfect way to get started. And of course, P3 PC also supports the new ArtNet pixel mapping input uh, functionality. So how would then a system with uh, P3 uh, PC look? Exactly the same as with a rack based P3 controller. ArtNet in from the media server, P3 out to the fixtures. And if you want to add some video, you can have some uh, a media player running on the laptop and have that as a video uh, source uh, 
as well. It can even go uh, easier than that. You can actually, with software like Matrix, for example, you can actually have the lighting control or the media server or big snapping software run on the same computer as the P3 software. So then basically Matrix is doing all the pixel mapping effects, outputting in an ArtNet straight back into P3 PC with a loopback adapter, and then P3 PC talks with the fixture. So that's an even more simple and probably the cheapest way to use P3 is, is just on a laptop uh, with the free software. Also very important, uh, P3 PC as a pre-programming tool. Um, as I mentioned before, and actually demo it as well. On the P3, you have a live preview of what's happening on your fixtures, uh, what's happening on your DMX, and you can actually preview what's, what's going to happen. As, as you saw in the demo with the Fetrons, you saw the video being rendered on the fixtures, you saw the DMX and ArtNet controls being rendered. So it will visualize whatever's coming from the media server and from the lighting console and give you a live uh, a preview uh, on that as well. I can actually, I wanna jump back to a demo for that. You can actually uh, also here in the preview window, a render onto the image. So of course the fixtures that I've patched do not match with the drawing or pictures of the building, but uh, imagine here you have a drawing or picture of the building. So here you can then map your fixtures onto the building or onto the stage drawing. Uh, and then you actually see how the effect will uh, show, show on the uh, building or stage. Uh, because we now have this new thing as well that you can render the video preview on top of an image or picture of your stage or building. It's, this is also new in version 5.2. I just want to highlight that quickly. And then uh, very important, uh, as I mentioned before, P3 is not only for rental uh, use, it's also very much used in, in fixed and architectural applications as I was showing uh, during the, the introduction. So for those type of applications, we have some specific uh, features in the P3 as well. So we have a built-in web server uh, in the P3, so allowing you on a fixed installation to uh, log into the P3 from anywhere around the world, uh, trigger presets remotely, get a live preview of uh, the incoming video into the web server, see if all the fixtures are still there, uh, get, a, get even temperature meet, uh, readings on all the fixtures. So you have a, a, a yeah, very uh, detailed control remotely of the P3 controller, which is of course key in the more architectural type of applications. Uh, another thing which is really important, not really the, the main topic of this, uh, session is that the P3 fixed register, which is basically a calibration adjustment tool. So imagine a building where you have a lot of fixtures installed for many years and some need to be replaced because of some damages. Using the fixed register, you can actually take those uh, old fixtures and adjust them to match the new fixtures, which is also part of P3 is this calibration and calibration adjustment tools. Of course, there's a lot more uh, advanced uh, features in the P3 controller. We have a preset system where you can have different layouts being triggered uh, from a lighting desk, uh, all kinds of uh, detailed stuff. Also movement control, allowing you to remap fixtures in real time if you have fixtures on moving trusses. There's a lot of more advanced stuff, but it's not really the topic of this basic introduction. Just know that it's there. So then to summarize, um, P3 is in, in, in many applications cheaper and less complicated than running hundreds of universe of DMX and DMX cables and nodes and all of the uh, infrastructure that comes with it. Uh, be aware that there's a new ArtNet pixel mapping input feature coming, which has been a, a major request from the market uh, since a while. So that's coming in version 5.2. From the P3, you can manage an entire rig without walking around, without disturbing the LD behind the console or media server. Super easy mapping, even for more complicated uh, rigs with some new useful tools such as align and spread coming uh, very soon. P3 allows you to run fixtures with video, with the MX ArtNet, or with a mix or switch between both. So you really get the best of both worlds, as I always like to say. Get started. 100% free of charge with P3PC. 
even if you're just using it as a simple ArtNet 2P3 converter. Many more powerful features uh, for fixed installations are available and more, many more advanced features uh, for more tech savvy users. Uh, but if you want to learn more about those, I really uh, recommend you to join some of the sessions we have planned uh, tomorrow and Thursday on integration with console or getting your system up and running. So that's uh, in the more advanced sessions. Uh, so to finish off, um, some crucial resources uh, where you want to go uh, after this basic introduction. So we have our training videos playlist on YouTube, which is uh, a series of videos, each highlighting one specific uh, feature of the uh, P3 controller. Uh, really good uh, uh, place to start. We as uh, the Harman team, we also uh, facilitate a lot of training seminars, uh, both in classroom setting uh, with our distributors in, in globally, we can help you with uh, getting a training at the distributor or at a uh, customer side directly or online trainings, which of course is now more the norm uh, for the coming months, obviously. Uh, also a good resource is the P3 user group on Facebook. And we're currently up to uh, quite a lot of people there right now. Uh, it's where, where experienced users can request new features, can get updates about when, when the next software is coming, uh, where new tips and tricks are shared. Uh, so that's, that's a good place uh, to start as well. Um, so that's yeah, basically some of the uh, crucial resources. If you're into scanning uh, QR codes, uh, these are the QR codes uh, to, those, um, to those resources. And then uh, now I would like to open up uh, for questions. Ben, did any questions come in via the chat? Uh, no questions came on uh, via the chat through that, so I've just un unmuted everyone now. Everyone on the call is unmuted. I will try and mute. There we go. <laughs> yes, that might be a good idea. So, um, thank you very much, Walter. Um If anyone has any questions, um, uh, can you explain the remote monitoring by built-in web server a bit more? Come through on the chat. Uh, yes. Uh, what's the quickest? Yeah. So I don't. I didn't. I don't really have any slides prepared for that. But so, um, what you would do with the P3 controller in a in a remote monitoring setting is that the P3 controllers on the backside they have a spare network port which you then can connect to the internet via a router or a corporate network. And then via a normal web browser on your laptop or on your phone, you can just browse to the P3 controller and then you get a web page, which is hosted inside the controller. And there you have, you can see the status of each fixture. So you have an overview of all your fixtures with their, if they're working, their temperature, any other parameters. You have a page where you can see the video coming into the P3. So you see if the media player is still running. You have a page where you see the, the ArtNet uh, status. Uh, you have a page where you can trigger presets or shut down the system, blackout the system, see run out. So there's a, it's basically a very detailed web page with different, well, it, it's, yeah, it's a web page with different pages, each giving you a, a, a view on some parts of what the P3 is doing. So it's, it prevents you to go on site behind the monitor of the P3 itself and, and, and start looking around. It allows you to diagnose a lot of uh, problems uh, remotely or even control some parts of the software remotely. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions anyone would like to ask at this moment in time? Uh, does the fixture adjust to help with the calibration on the face five panels keep getting a white panel with a small black square? Uh, well, yes, so that's yes, the, 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 the P3 fixture adjuster tool allows you to adjust the calibration also on face five panels, where it's typically used to compensate for LED aging, because of course, if you use a product heavenly, LEDs are not perfect, uh, they will uh, lose some of their brightness and using the P3 fixture adjust, you can take those panels and adjust the, the calibration upwards to match a brand new panel. However, the specific thing uh, with the 
where you say that it's white with the black square in the corner, that's typically a hardware failure where the P3 is unable uh, to read the calibration memory, then it will give that specific pattern. So for that, I would recommend to contact our service team because that sounds like there is a hardware failure on, uh, on that panel or multiple panels uh, with the calibration uh, because then, yeah, that specific pattern that you describe is, is an indication of a calibration uh, failure that, yeah. Adjusting the calibration won't help if the, the calibration in the first place has an issue. No more questions have come through. If anyone wants to come through on the microphone, that's fine. I've unmuted everyone. Uh, I think so. You should be able to ask any questions if you want. Could get noisy. It could get noisy. <laughs> okay, so um, with no other questions will come through. Um, as you'll see, there's an email address there at the bottom as well, which is help at harman.com. That comes through to the EMAA team, so that's myself and a couple of the applications engineers as well. So um, depending on what your questions are, we can take those. Um, these, there is a number of different plat, uh, courses going through on these platforms in the next few days. As well as I said, there's a couple more advanced ones tomorrow on P3. So if you found this beneficial, we, we're, we're doing some more advanced and how you can set the P3 up with the console and how you can use that. And um, please do have a look at those further courses and get those signed up. Um, there are some more global platform uh, courses being run on the global platform um, at martin.com, martin-learning-sessions. Or if you go to the top of the website, you can find a little link which says learning sessions. And then on the right hand side, there's a whole lot of courses uh, for, uh, from Harman staff. On the left hand side, I think it's um, from, from people outside of Harman running different courses to sort of try and help you along. Um, and as I said, if you've got any questions, please uh, do come back to us on that EMAA help email address um, and we'll be more than happy to point them in the right direction. Um, but it just leaves me to thank you very much for coming on the call today and remember to uh, stay safe during this time and we look forward to speaking to you soon. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Take care. Have a nice day. Thank you.